Well, this morning's uh, reading from the New Testament. Now, uh, uh, this is the uh, King James Version as translated by the uh, Gullah culture. It's the, uh, well, it's the Gullah, Gullah Bible. Uh, just to, to, to remind you, uh, every Sunday, it was just a Sunday, but every, every morning I've been reading out of the Gullah Bible. And... Um, it's been an experience. Um, I've, it's, it's been going on for two weeks now. I don't know if I'm getting any better, but you know we're trying. The, the whole idea is very simple. Uh, when when the slaves were free, you know my ancestors were free. They they, they couldn't read. Nobody, not a whole lot of people. Well, truth be told, not a whole lot of people in North America was reading. Let's put it that way. But they uh, they they started reading real quick uh, because basically they took the Bible and started because that was the book that was the, the most. The book that was around the most, so it was a good unifier, and so they started to, you know. So I, what do I want to feel? What, what what would they feel like? You know, what does it feel like not to know a language and to try to learn a language from reading a, a, a you know a Bible? And so that's what I've been doing. And how I started, I'll, I'll break it down this uh, this this Sunday, maybe once a week. I will. I, for a number of reasons, I started. I started because I just the idea intrigued me, right? And then what I was really actually thinking is that my uh, my grandmother every morning would be up like I, I wake up early. I've always been an early riser, so I wake up uh, early. And usually, you know, if I walk out about six o'clock, she'd be, you know, there reading, reading the Bible. And uh, but she would never call me. Oh, she never say anything. You know, she just read like, oh, your space or my space. This is how I learned with, with animals. I do the same thing. Like an animal, whatever it is, you know, I let them be over there. I'm over here. We're cool until you know that animal approaches me. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, so I started this ritual. Now, this, I started because I wanted to look sort of like, I don't know, sort of official. I see, you see, I grew up Catholic, but I, but I'm, 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 I guess, uh, later, later on, uh, this Sunday sermons happens on Sundays, this is Sunday, and I read from Mr. Neely Filler Jr.'s book, a uh, compensatory concept, you know, the code book, and, uh, and, 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 and he, uh, for years, I would tell people I was a deist, and that's like the, you know, God makes the universe and then goes away, and everybody you got to fend for yourself, kind of thing. Uh, but uh, but that's not really what I am, because what I I have a lot of religious experiences all over the world, and so. But he came up with this term, uh, uh, eclectic pluralism. So that's what I am. I'm, I'm an eclectic pluralist. So I I go I can go any place, any mosque, tabernacle, what <laughs> church, whatever it is. I I go, I go there. Anyway, so the first thing I do. This is a kente cloth I had for a long time. I think I got this back in the 90s. You know, there's kente, people think it's just one line, like the like the pattern you saw with, 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 the, with the politicians kneeling, you know, they want to become black, or I guess they want to go to the source, be African. Anyway, so it's a very unique one. So I've always had it. I always carry it with me sometimes. I just always have it. So what I do with the first thing I, I use this, because like I said, I grew up Catholic, and I know they always, they, 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 they be kissing the cloth and doing all kinds of things. So I, what I do is I touch it to my heart. You don't see that usually. My heart down there. I touch it to my heart. Then I'll either, or I'll touch it to my head first, or I'll touch it to my mouth first. But usually I do it my heart first, my head, and my mouth. I gotta kiss it and put it over. Now this makes me an official. It makes me official somehow. I don't know how it does. And for this particular set, um, my grandmother's picture is over there, so she's always looking at me when I'm doing this particular part, right? Um, this is this a, a brother, nondescript brother who's on the calendar, and all I did was just. From last September, yeah, last September, and I like it, it's a scholarship. So I said, "Hey, I'm sort of doing a scholarship thing. I'm it's self being self taught. So that, that's what it is. Oh, and this is a this is a special. This is a flag. As, as you can see, it's a, it's a red stripes, black stripes, and uh, and a green uh, a green background for the black stars. You know, and uh, so uh, I just I like the flag. You know, I got it a bunch of places. I'm gonna get some more. Actually, I need the the uh, African Union flag too. But uh, so that's the set because it's African American, you know, kind of thing. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Um, and then what we usually do is we just go to any page in the in the Bible. I just take that, you know, because all the Bibles have a little thingy, which I particularly like in books. You know, my books that came from uh, Library of America, they always always have these things too. I like them. So I just go to any page. I stay in the back. Stay in the back. And I just go to any page, and I just you know, boom boom. So right there, oh. We have Revelation 1. Sometimes I try to start reading without the glasses. It doesn't work very well. There you go. So then, uh, 
I go to the page, then I start. Oh, you might hear in the background some little stuff sounds like meditative music or sleep music. Well, every night, you know, it's, I just put it on. You know, it's like 11 hours of music. And I just finally sleep for about five or six hours anyway. Um, so let's go to Revelation. Let's go to page uh, uh, 843. Revelations 1. Let's go to... Um, Okay, I do the hard, the harder one, not the hard one, but long one. Uh, one nine, Revelations one nine. Hey John, on a Christian brother, we all the follow uh, Jesus together, and Christ, we all be a uh, strong on the all we suffering, and we led Jesus. Christ rule over we, cause they been tell people God word and the truth about Jesus. The chunk me upon this island called Pat Patmos. Okay, I should show you some of these words if you can just see it. So you can, I'm reading down here this. Nine, John nine. See, this is how it looks. So, so you notice, like, when they say, they say Jettus. I don't know if you can read that. I can't read it. Anyway, see, see they have, it's a J E D U S. That's Jesus. You see? Anyway, that's what the words look like. Um, and then I give you the translation. Uh, Revelation is one nine. I, John, who also am your brother. And companion in tri tribulation and in the kingdom and presence of Jesus Christ was in the hour that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, I know this passage. Oh, there's this great uh, Revelations 1 9. Yeah, Revelations 1 9. What do we know? There's a song, there's a, a, a gospel song that I play. I, I like a city choir does it, but I got it from um, the First Baptist Choir of New Jersey. Some, 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 some long, I used to play this on my radio program in the 90s all the time. I just slip it in there every once in a while right there. And I really love it. But it's like Revelations 1. It's a great song. And they, they say this stuff. Anyway, so let me, I usually read it twice. So let's continue the tradition here. Um, hey, John. On a Christian brother, we all did follow Jesus together. In Christ, we all be all strong on the all we suffering. And we led Jesus who Christ rule over we. Because I've been telling people God's word and the truth about Jesus. They chunked me upon the island of called Patmos. Okay, let's read it one more time. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and presence of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow. Well, Okay, so now you understand. Oh, I'm also, I should tell you this. Um, I always wear my, uh, I call this my Ogun cap. Um, I've had, like I said, I've been through many ritual, ritual, ritualistic situations, even bathed in the Ganges, that kind of thing. But on, on my head, see, this is the thing in the, in the West African culture of a Yoruba culture cause from Nigeria. Um, the, I'm, I'm, called, I'm a child of Ogun. Now, Ogun was the cat that how oh, cool never gets this credit right when when the, when the world was first doing doing this thing and, and it was you know all forest and whatever grass and all the rest of that stuff so the Orishas wanted to come down so every time they tried to get down the grass would grow and they couldn't get through get through the grass so you know Ogun's up there in his cave hanging out not doing any feeding his dogs and stuff like that and they say Ogun you gotta help us yo man because see because what people don't know about Ogun is a warrior sure but also because he deals with iron He's uh he's also a healer. He's in the medicine, right? But because he because what he does, I'm gonna tell you the story right now. Uh, he's also what they call an architect. An architect just plans things out, you know, like that. Well, he planned it out with with his with his uh, uh, machete, with his with his iron 
tool because like man lagoon's the one with the with the grass skirt and bad chest and just with eyes right um always depicted as a warrior doing some stuff like that anyway so what he did he said uh oh, man because they came and say, oh, go and look, we got a problem. You know, every time we got a problem, it's, 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 well, we don't come to you every time we have a problem because a lot of other people deal with problems. But this is like a serious problem. We're trying to get to this planet over here. We're trying to get down here. But, you know, the, every, this planet's kind of weird because every time we try to get down, we start walking. All of a sudden, big grass growing up. We can't get through. So can you help us? He said, yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> So he goes down with it, and he just cuts a path through. He cuts every time he cuts something, they don't grow it back up. You cut with a knife, they don't grow, they don't grow it back up. So you, and let's and sort of all the reasons get down to earth because Ogun was the one that did it. Right. Anyway, back to the point. So Ogun has a, a, a in Nigeria. I think I've got to get these. I got it written down someplace. In Nigeria, the Ogun um, color is blue. On in uh, in Kondoble, when when that when that Yoruba culture moved to Brazil. Through Kanembe, the colors I think is blue and white, or vice versa with those countries. But then when it moved up to North America through the Cuban strain, right? Uh, Europe moved to North America. If for some reason, and I don't know, I got to find this out. The colors for North America is red, black, and green. I should say it this way: uh, uh, it's a black, green with a little bit of red. That's officially what it is. Now this hat here, this I've had. I got. I should tell you where I got it from. This is a restaurant in Cape Town. Uh, called uh, 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 Cape to Cuba, Cuba to Cape, Cape to Cuba, or Cuba to Cape, something like that. And all the staff has these hats. And what it is, these hats, I got the original one too. There's another original one. They had one on one side. They had a they had a flag, you know, the Cuban flag with with uh, Che's picture on it. On the other side, it was just a big red star, right? But both uh, things on one side, this hat is green, on the other side is black. So when and then with and because it's a little bit of red. I call this my Ogun cap. So when I wear this, either I'm in battle I'm, or I'm doing a religious thing, you know, because it comes from the Yoruba culture. So that's why I always wear this hat when I'm doing the readings, doing the, the, the Gullah readings, because, uh, well, because it's very African. This is very African. This is very African. I'm very African. It's Africa. <laughs> I got to get back there soon. All right, I'll check you out later. It's just been me, T, from the Patterson's Taking the Train to Repent, letting you know what I only suspect.